everyone. Welcome to our PDA and this is Shubha. So today we are in Sri Mata Vaishnav Devi University which is located near Katra, Jammu and Kashmir and I am standing near the foundation stone of this university. Today we are going to interact with one of the well-renowned professor and the vice chancellor of this university, Professor Pragdi Kumar. So first of all, thank you professor for your valuable time. Thank you very much for coming to this university and Oh, Jai Matadi. Jai Matadi, sir. And uh, we are hoping that yeah, the university is wonderful, the place is wonderful, and I am near the foundation stone. So please tell us something about this university. This university was uh, incorporated in the year 1999 through an act of the, the then state of Jammu and Kashmir's legislature. And the university started its academic act activities in the year 2004 when this building was inaugurated by none other than the late Sri APG Abdul Kalam who was the President of the Republic of India and academic activities started with just 54 students who were enrolled in two schools namely the School of uh, Management and School of Information Technology and this the first lecture in the School of Information Technology and management was held by Abdul Kalam sir himself and since then the university has never looked backwards and today when we as I am standing in front of you the university has got 14 schools which are functional organized under five faculties and close to 2800 students are on the rolls of the university and Students from various parts of the country uh, are studying here. Similarly, faculty, say staff members and faculty members from different states of the country are all residing on the campus. And we are looking forward to marching in synchronism and step by step with the other universities of the country. I wish the best, sir. The way you're marching and the way you're heading towards the beautiful future of the students. It's hoping, it's wishing great. I must say, uh, aesthetic beauty over here and the kind of faculty the people they have. And the last but not the least, you are seeing that uh, Vice Chancellor himself is taking out the crucial time. That's a crucial time and we are going to step ahead and I'm going to show you the number of visits of this university. So, Professor, now I would request you to show us the entire university. Surely. Let us move to... Shri Mata Vaishnav Devi University is located at the foothill of the famous shrine, Shri Mata Vaishnav Devi Temple. So please tell us something about it. So look, Shubhra, uh, look at the place where we are standing. You can just see the on top of the mountains, Ardh Kumari. Ardh Kumari, you can have a direct look at that particular building. And right. Mata Vaishnav Devi shrine is just 20 meters or say 20 minutes drive from this university and in fact this university was established uh, by the shrine board Masri Mata Vaisna Devi shrine board and you would be surprised to know that close to one crore pilgrims visit this shrine every year and on a daily basis I would say this translates to roughly 30 to 35,000 pilgrims every day and this university is truly blessed to have the blessings from Sri Mata Vaishnav Devi directly. All our students and faculty members and staff members, any visitor to the university, he is always under the direct watch of the goddess Mata Vaishnav Devi and we function under her uh, divine guidance all the time and you can see the architecture of this university there is a very interesting anecdote related to the architecture of this university right and when this university was being constructed then a national level competition was organized uh, by the shrine board to select the architect for okay. this university and the architecture blends so well with the topography of this place you can see the peaks all the schools of the university uh, i'll just take you to the peaks uh, of various buildings and once if you have an overview aerial overview of the place then you won't be able to make the difference between the peak at which the shrine is located 
and the peaks of various buildings of this university. It's a wonderful uh, architecture and all our facilities uh, are, we have tried our level best to blend the facilities uh, available in the university with natural surroundings uh, around the university. Truly agreed, sir, and I must end it with Jai Matali. Jai Matali. We are now standing at the BC Junction. The student population and the entire campus population calls this point as BC Junction because we have got B block and C block adjacent to this junction. Okay. And this is also important because the Jammu and Kashmir JK Bank is uh, the ATM of JK Bank is located just here, though we have full fledged branch of JK Bank. and Evening hours, this place is a budge with lots of activities and students. Uh, uh, and you can see in front of this, we have Shivali Hostel. So we are now standing in front of Shivali Hostel. And as I had mentioned to you earlier also, the theme of the university gels very well with the topography of this region. Lots of mountains are there. And our hostels, you would be surprised to know that our hostels are also named after various uh, mountains or mountain ranges, Shivalik Hostel. This hostel, uh, Shivalik A and Shivalik B, there is a two large girls hostels housing around seven, close to 700 girls students are staying in these two hostels. And apart from these two hostels, we also have one more hostel exclusively meant for girls. And you would be shown that place also sure. in the evening and our wardens and dean student welfare they would be giving you further details of these hostels we would love to interact sir so sir, where we are moving now now we are going towards the helipad this university is unique in the sense that this university has got three helipads and these helipads are used when vvips like president of india or prime minister of india they visit the campus okay. and in case of emergency also civilian authorities use this these helipads for better accessibility. Now the road connectivity has improved a lot. Earlier there used to be lots of landslides mm -hmm. and the communication with this university used to get struck up and when the university was uh, inaugurated in the year 2004 then the means of communications were not that advanced and keeping that thing in mind the university had constructed these three helipads. We would be now just going towards the hill reaching the helipad. Great, we are looking forward. Uh, we are now standing dot at the, at the helipad and you can see three of them are there. This is first one, mm -hmm. the second one is there and the third one is there. Right. And I'd like to take you back to the year 1999, 2001 and 2002 when this university was getting constructed and the then governor of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, Lieutenant General SK Sinha, he used to take a lot of interest in the development of this university, being the chancellor of the university. And he used to visit this campus at least thrice a week. And the connectivity from Jammu to this place was not that uh, good. I'm talking about 1999, 2000, 2001 and 2002. And there were very few tunnels right now while we were coming from Jammu to this place you must have crossed a series of tunnels right. these tunnels were not there earlier and it used to take two to three hours from jammu to this place and because of that difficulty the university thought it wise to have these helipads mm -hmm. and these helipads are now also being used whenever there is a vip movement in the area the civil administration also uses these helipads and the university whenever we are hosting presidents and prime ministers, then these helipads are being used. Great. Sir. So it's such an aesthetic beauty, I must say, that's surrounded by mountains. Uh, you must be very much inspired and motivated of being in this place. Y yes, of course. Look at the backdrop. Yeah, sure. These are the famous Trikota Hills. Okay. And the uh, Trikota Hills are uh, known as the abode of Mata Vaishno Devi. And whenever you visit the shrine, you will have a better view of these mountains. And very interesting fact about this is that whenever there is a snowfall, then top of these mountains, you won't be able to see anything other than snow. In fact, we had snow uh, only a couple of weeks back. In fact, okay. 10 days back, 
we had snow and though this year the snowfall was scanty but then we had snow for around 10 days or so uh, uh, atop these mountains and you can see such a wonderful look truly a serene beauty i must say the greenhouses which you see there right. these greenhouses are uh, this uh, these greenhouses were constructed under a project which was sponsored by the ministry of ayus and they have got a collection of medicinal plants which are uh, native of jammu and kashmir not only jammu and kashmir the medicinal plants which are grown anywhere in the country mm -hmm. it's a very beautiful collection of those medicinal plants and it's a registered facility uh, under the ministry of ayus and the university is very well maintaining it right heading forward now now i'll be taking you to the medical aid center and the faculty and staff residences guest house of the university and a married students hostel which is coming up and it will become available for allotment with effect from the next academic session great that's a new uh, like what is about married uh, academic so we admit students in PhD programs where it has been observed that there are many students who are already married when they get enrolled and so the university like other uh, standard universities of the country we also provide for their accommodation as a okay. family and it's a very beautiful so, setup and uh, this is the medical now uh, we have come to the medical aid center and so uh, we have resident doctors this place is manned round the clock by doctors and paramedic staff we have got three uh, qualified medical practitioners on roles of the university and they are available here around the clock and okay. in case of any emergency the students 24/7 uh, it's available 24/7 okay, nice. it's available 24/7 and uh, now we are going towards the guest house okay of the university and the residential uh, part as i had already mentioned so now you can see the residential part of the university where housing for faculty and staff members are provided we have just entered that and look at the beautiful guest house again in tune with the theme of the architecture right. of the campus you can see the roofs of all the rooms in the guest house mm -hmm. being styled in the form of uh, plateaus and peaks and we have got another girls hostel vaishnavi hostel and there is cctv also right yes, i can yeah. see uh, there are some Mm. Cafeteria. Well. Cafeteria. In fact, we have in most of the hostels we have provided the cafeteria facility also, and we are now just entering the road on which the guest house of the university is there, and this is the guest house of the university, and we have got fifty-one rooms and suites uh -huh. uh, available in this guest house, and all the rooms are air conditioned, and it has got uh, a very beautiful lobby and. Uh, in front of the guest house you can see we have got various levels of accommodation level a level b level c level d and others so some of the uh, houses were lying on that left hand side of the campus and the faculty uh, and the faculty accommodation is just in front of you you can see these duplex houses are meant for senior level faculty members okay. and middle level faculty members are also some of the middle level faculty members are also staying they're designated in these uh, uh, they are, okay. these um, they have got we have got in fact designated accommodation level right. 1 level 2 level 3 or type a type b type, type c b. as you see okay. in other government organizations exactly. and now we are going to enter uh, that married accommodation hostel area where uh, the construction is in full swing and you will see how uh, that facility is coming up Mm -hmm. and on the right hand side you can see we have got multi storied buildings also housing we are housing for faculty members and staff members are provided and okay on the left so now you can have a look at the workshop mechanical workshop this mm -hmm. workshop has got several uh, labs of the mechanical engineering department apart from the general workshop and the university has also got a gas agency that gas agency building is also next to this because when the university was established right. so there was no uh, gas agency 
in the nearby areas and to cater to the needs of the faculty members, staff members and MESS, the university itself started a gas agency. So that gas agency building is also there. And you can see this basketball court. This basketball court is also uh, functional. And in the evenings, the students might yeah, be practicing. Yeah. Uh, so now we are reaching the Matrika Auditorium, and this is the real piece of jewel in the crown of this university. This is one of the most uh, heavily used infrastructure of this university. And this auditorium, it truly boasts to support the best audiovisual facilities available in this region and the sitting capacity of this auditorium is more than 950. Oh, this is the university auditorium named Matrika to signify to signify the importance of Mata Vaishnava Devi mm -hmm. and this is one of the most advanced audiovisual facility available in this region and the university conducts all its convocation and other important events in this university and you can see this beautiful artwork that how it has it's been uh, quite produced impressive. how it has been produced and you can see the impressive facade of the you must have seen the impressive facade of this auditorium and uh, even the architecture and sculpture over there uh, in fact we have a school of architecture and planning and okay. they are continuously involved in the design and development of this particular auditorium mm -hmm. and any uh, improvisations or any addition which is taking place in this auditorium is under their supervision and you can see the facilities which are there the seating capacity of this auditorium is close to 950 okay. and apart from this main auditorium and it is a two level auditorium I just showed you the mm -hmm. staircases and we have got meeting halls and meeting rooms uh, available on this first floor also and we have got VIP lounge and executive lounge uh, which are present inside this auditorium. I think and six exits and entries are yes, there. Yes, yes. Oh, that we have, we have to follow the mm -hmm. statutory requirements right. meant for such auditoriums and all the cultural programs uh, of the university are invariably conducted. Other facilities which are available uh, with this auditorium, mm -hmm. we have got a VIP lounge. I am now going to take you to the executive council room where as I mentioned you, the meeting of the executive councils are held and even different programs where the number of audience is limited, we usually conduct such programs and you can see the photographs of different convocations and I just take this opportunity to take you around the I photographs. Think the first, these are the all convocations held. Today, yes, right? and you can identify that. various prime ministers and presidents who have graced this occasion starting from the first convocation of the university which was conducted on 25th April 2008. Uh, Manmohan Singh Ji was the prime minister right. and he graced that occasion. And then we had the second convocation of the university, mm -hmm. wherein in uh, in uh, Narayan Murthy he graced the second convocation of the university, mm -hmm. and then we had the third convocation of the university, where Pratibha Patel, okay. Madam, mm -hmm. who was the sitting president of India, she graced that occasion, and then in the fourth convocation of the university, mm -hmm. vice president of the country, Syed Hamid Ansari, he graced the occasion, whereas the fifth convocation of the university was again graced by none other than the present yeah. Prime Minister of the country, yeah. President Ramnath Kovind, he had graced that occasion. And in this uh, seventh convocation of the university, it was chaired by uh, the Chancellor of the university, Sri Satpal Malikji, whereas in the eighth convocation of the university, uh, Honorable Lieutenant Governor and Chancellor of the university, gave the convocation address and the ninth convocation of the university was held recently on 29 December 2023 okay. in which the convocation address was delivered by the education minister of the country Sri Dharmendra Padhanji. Okay great. So it was a quite I would say that impressive auditorium. I would like those. to tell you something about this lawn also. On the occasion of every convocation the VIPs and the 
dignitaries who grace the occasion, they plant trees and you can have a look at the various trees which were planted by the VIPs and different other dignitaries and in times to come this garden itself will become very beautiful. You can see the decoration of S. I think Sri Mata Vaishnavi University, the, this thing is written, logo. this logo, yeah. It's quite impressive in the terms of the plantation they have yeah. done, right? 